really hot. Hey guys, welcome back to Louder Off-Road, where today we got uh, Kyle's 2021 Duramax with the camper in it on the hoist. We got to do an oil change, fuel filters, and we are also going to put this air ride kit in so that he doesn't have to manually fill his airbags every time he wants to go up or down. Let's get to it. Okay, so what we're doing today is we've got this air lift kit with this wireless Bluetooth module, with this remote, with the two presets that we're gonna put into Mule so that we don't have to fill the airbags up anymore with these dumb things. We just get to push a button. So we're at the shop where we can put it on the hoist, hoist, and we've got 45 foot ceilings. We got Aaron here. And I stole Diesel. We stole Diesel. He's ours for the day now. Diesel shop day? Shop day? He's pumped. He loves shop days. So yeah, we'll get into it. We gotta do a full service oil change and that air kit. And then if I have time, and I didn't tell Kyle I was gonna do this, I gotta fix this. This is, this is not acceptable. It was supposed to go here, but the harness sticks out and it punches into the door of the camper. But I, I, can't, I can't deal with this zip tie, fabric cobble, hokey pokey thing. So we might try and deal with that too while we're at it. Don't mind this stupid light that hums. Where is it? That one. Anyway. So what we need to do is we need, we have a compressor, we have the control module, and then a whole bunch of electrical and plumbing. So the electrical we're gonna have come up into that module, you can see, if you go back previous videos, we put this in for all those lights and everything, but we're gonna use a few of the features of that, as well as some of the features that come with the compressor in conjunction. So what we're gonna do is, I want these to be as hidden as possible, but also as accessible as possible if you got issues, but you're not gonna bang gear into them. So what I'm thinking is this control module is gonna go way up here like so, and the compressor, I think, is gonna go upside down here. And then you have all the space for all the other goodies without jamming your gear bags into it all or catching wiring harnesses or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll get that mounted up. We'll show you where it's gonna be mounted. And then we'll see what we're gonna do about getting the air lines up. Uh, I'm gonna put them in the frame, conduit them up and through so that any mud or anything while he's out on his adventures isn't gonna hang on those lines and pull them out. Okay, so we got the compressor and the controller mounted up in the top of the cabinet so that we can't wreck it or do anything. What's gonna happen is the wiring's gonna go up through the top into that control box where there's power and everything. And then I'm gonna shoot an airline out the back. And then there's also gonna be a Schrader right here as an override if this thing ever decides to grenade or stop working or blah 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 you can air the bags up manually with like a tire truck or a bicycle pump or whatever you may choose so the next thing we'll do is we'll start getting the wiring and the airlines in and then we'll start running them back to the bags and get it all tied up nice okay here's a little update so i took the air out of the spare tire so i can get my hand in there and flex the tire down I've taken all the old airline off the two bags, rerouted, reran everything inside frames and cross members. I've got them to this point here where they're going to tee off. And what I've done to get even more room, as you can see, I've got the jack on the hoist, which is the nice part about being at the shop, not also I'm not laying on the ground, is I've lifted the frame off of the axle so I can reach over much easier with way more room. So what we're doing now is we're gonna run the main feed line here. We don't need all of this, they just give you a lot, because normally what they say in the instructions is the compressor's to be mounted under the hood. We're not doing that, so we got lots of lines. So what we're gonna do is make it real nice. It's gonna punch through and go into this module, 
or computer or controller or whatever you want to call it. That's what's going to take that little Bluetooth remote and is going to trigger the compressor to cut in and cut out to keep your bags at exactly the pressure that you set them at. So this little controller will actually kick the compressor on to go up and if you dial the pressure down, it'll actually bleed air out of the bags. So you can go up and down with the push of that remote. So once we get those lines punched through, we'll get some real nice grommets, some nice 90 fittings, bulkheads, make it real nice, no rubbing. And then the next thing is gonna be the electrical, which is gonna go up into this box, into that aux beam controller. We're gonna use a few of the aux beam features and a few of my own creations. Okay, so it's kind of hard to uh, film and have your body hiding totally under the truck, but this is what we got. I don't know how to make this light. Oh, there. So we got the controller, we got the compressor. We've got uh, bulkheads mounted. So that's so that the lines can go through something, a frame or a box and not rub. So that's actually got a fitting on both sides and it bolts through. So, there we go, we got that. I'd show you under here, but it is inside the frame, so you can't really see anything at all. So the next stage is, is we've got the harness up and into this box, and we're gonna need power, ground is the black, and pink is your keyed ignition. So we're gonna Y this so that we can run the compressor off the aux beam and the key. So kind of like we did that switch, except for you won't need that. It'll just run when you want it to run with the little remote. Okay, so we got the truck in the air. We got everything all buttoned up. We got all the Bluetooth all synced together. So I don't know if you can see this. So you can see I got it, focus, focus. I got it set at 13 pounds. If I go up to 14, the compressor will kick in. And if I go down, you'll hear it bleed off. There you go. And then you just press and hold the two dots and the one dot and you can have presets. So in my truck, I put the small dot as just everyday driving, just the camper it'll be. We'll say eight pounds. And then the two dots will be a preset for camper with the trailer. So as soon as you hook up, you just click. So I think it's set to 20. Yep. So it'll go up to 20. And you can see the truck lifting. So it'll go up. There you go, there's 20 pounds. So you can see there's 20. And then if I hit the, focus, there's 20. If I hit the single dot, which is five pounds, once the backlight goes off, you can see. You can see it's bleeding off right now. There's five pounds. Focus on that. You guys get the idea. Up inflates, down deflates, and then no more playing with the Schrader valve. Unless the pump dies, then we have the fitting for it. So no matter what, you're not left hooped. So what I'm gonna do next is I'll find the base pressure, which is just the truck with the camper. Take a tape measure, make sure the truck rides perfectly level. I'll set that as dot one. And then Kyle will just have to set dot two the next time he goes on a ride and takes a trailer with him. Because I'm sure he'll sit out there with a the tape measure like I would. <coughs> oh, choking on all this stupid oil spray. God damn. Next thing on the chopping block is we gotta change Kyle's oil. Which is basically the easy part. Because it's what I do all day long. Al, that's really hot. Bam. For all you people, don't drop the plug in the thing. There's a grate in there, and if you don't get oil on your hands, you're just being a big baby. It's just oil. Mmm, black. And then of course I'm gonna pick Kyle's truck apart underneath, tell him everything that's wrong with it, because there's things wrong. Bonus of warranty drive, right? And of course the Duramax, the filter's just a little too far away on the side to be able to do both at the same time. Maybe. Might be able to rig this up. There's things I've seen that Kyle's probably not gonna like, but we'll uh, address those in a bit. We'll get all 9.7 liters out of here, and then we're going full synthetic, because, well, it's synthetic. 
That could stop any time. I need to grab a filter wrench. Do, do, do. On the road again. Can't wait to get on the road again. I think the funniest part about this whole thing is when I ordered the parts, I was like, these can't be right. Apparently the new uh, LP5 Duramaxes use an oil filter about the size of a Toyota van. I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. They used to have, you know, like a pickle jar sort of thing. No, they just went super small. Not sure about the biggest fan of it, but looking in here, it looks like it's because they need to make room for all kinds of environmental juice pump line. Come on. That's stuff we all hate. But we're in Saskatchewan, so delete it. That's all I gotta say to that. Delete it. I'm gonna get away with this. We're gonna do it. Oh, dealers. By hand, people, by hand. Good Lord. There she goes. And of course, because we all love engineers, this is probably gonna drip all over everything. Okay, let's give her a try. See what happens. Nope, that's not gonna go in at all. One at a time. The oil finally stopped dripping, draining, doing whatever it does. So we'll get the plug back in. We'll snug it up. See, snug. 3 8 ratchet. Not a breaker bar. We aren't a bunch of savages here. Yeah. Okay. Now comes the part where you get oil down your armpit, which I didn't. Look at that. Do, 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 do. So I had a look around. Everything looks great. Airbags are working, but um, there's a small problem. There's an axle seal. I smelt gear oil this morning when I was driving it. I'm like, this is weird. Yeah, front axle seal. It is kind of a GM thing to have it front axle seals go. They're super, super easy to fix. But nonetheless, it's a thing. So Kyle, get that looked after. Look at that. I don't even any oil on my hands. There is, however, oil over this. Okay, go grab some filters, let this drip. Small change in scenery. We've got the oil filter on, oil drained. While she's up in the air, oh so conveniently, see I'm standing up with the camper in the back, is uh, we gotta throw a fuel filter in this thing. So, I gotta go find some tools and then get diesel fluid down my armpit, which is gonna be so much fun. I can honestly say, I think diesel fluid is or diesel fluid, oh my God, who am I? Diesel fuel is probably worse than or equivalent to, oh, we need way bigger, way bigger. What do you think? 36 mil? That's her. I just got to grab a half inch oofta bar with an extension to crack her open. So, we'll get this cracked open, probably splash fuel all over you guys. Maybe, maybe not. See how tight they put this on. Okay guys, it's plastic. Calm her down here. Oh, I hear Gushing, glurping noises. There we go. Okay, we'll let that drain for a bit because uh, I don't want that diesel down my armpit. Fuel filter housing cartridge out. We'll pull this apart. Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. Fling diesel everywhere, of course. T 
take the o-ring off there's a it's a cartridge style so it's like a cup threads on has an o-ring on it don't need that new filter comes with new one always change these last thing you need is fuel puking out on you truck running like garbage check engine lights fuel pressure codes and then with the diesel that's dripping get a little on your hands because it's just diesel and put some on that o-ring so that she real nice and then always i always wipe i should say you should i wipe these cups out because it is kind of one of the lower points of the fuel filter and because there's a filter in there there is a chance that whatever might have got into that fuel tank is laying in the bottom of this so i always get the chunks out because there's no sense taking the chunks and sucking them into the new filter crack this new bad boy open now See, I've left the plastic half on. What I'm gonna do, you see I've clicked it together and then I'll pull the plastic off and then I don't get my greasy, dirty, stupid air compressor, gritty hands on the filter. So now it's nice and clean. I can hold it by this, not a fingerprint, nothing. And then you just thread her back on. And remember, it's plastic, plastic. So if it doesn't want to go, something's not right. See, I've bottomed it out now to the O-ring by hand. You know, eight or nine turns. If you have to bar it from the first thread, not gonna have a good day. And there is a torque spec on these, it's right on it. So that's bottomed out and then just ugh, that's all you need that's the low pressure filter so all it's got is 15 20 psi in it because that's just feeding the high pressure to the top so once you got that done wipe all your stuff because the worst thing to do is send this out and then it drip in somebody's garage aka kyle's which i would laugh but my name's on it you just clean it all up so there's no drips and then uh, we'll put oil in the engine and then we'll prime the fuel system. Let's go. So by far the best part about not being at the Mainville, come on. Mainville garage is uh, this. Yeah. Big dog hoist with camper and incredibly high ceiling. So I don't have to climb around and do stupid monkey ninja things. Think of that. I mean, I still might need my step to get up here. Boom, done. Look at that. Throw some oil in it and we'll get into uh, bleeding that fuel system so this thing starts. So we're up top, oil caps off. Second best part about being at the shop is the uh, oil Kyle needs is in an incredibly convenient gun that I just have to string out here and and no bottles. So I'll string that bad boy out and we'll get this thing filled. I got the gun stringed up, stringed. Beep, blop, boop, English, not good. Therefore, stick this in and we wait. Yeah, I know. Not the most normal dude in the world. But let's be honest, you can come up with a pretty sweet tune with this. This is also way faster than dumping things in with the jug. Either one liter at a time or incredibly slowly down a funnel with a four liter jug. Also not fun, because there's six liters already. Admit it, you're doing it in your head. You're singing a tune. Five, six, seven. Dude things. Give the old dipstick a uh, dip. Can't find the hole. Look at that. Just a little bit hair shy over full 
which means I start this baby and she'll be right. Oh no, gotta get the, come on. There, gotta get the cap to read straight up and down. Can't have her upside down. That would just be detrimental to my sanity. Let's go for a walk. So next step is to get into the truck. Did I leave the keys in here? They are in my pocket. These new vehicles with these keyless thingies, keep them in your pocket when you're doing oil changes. And then people can't just jump in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bleed the fuel system out first. So keys in the truck, foot off the brake. You're just gonna hold this button till the truck, what I call powers on. Oh, come on, stop. there. So you get all your dash lights, all your fancy fancies. You can hear it underneath priming and it's just shut off. So what you do is you do that three times. So you turn this back off, tap the brake once, that'll reset the computers, hold the button again. Wait for everything to power up. You can hear it again. Oh, there's the compressor. So you can hear it pushing all that air out and through. There we go. So we're making progress. So turn it off. Foot on the brake. Resets it. And then we do it again. Now you may have to do it a fourth time if that pump still sounds like it's pushing air. Which this time around, it's totally silent. So at this point, put your foot on the brake, push the button. Voila. And then what I like to do is I bring this up to about 1100, 1300, and I hold it there for about 15, 20 seconds. That's gonna make sure that you got proper fuel pressure and fuel flow as well as it's gonna build oil pressure, get everything oiled up. So when you check that dipstick, you're gonna get a proper level. Now, while you're waiting that 30 seconds or so, make sure that that oil pressure gauge, no matter what vehicle you're doing, reads oil pressure relatively quickly. If you don't see that gauge come up or it's really low, you're gonna have further problems. Because we did fuel filters on a diesel, always make sure that it idles nice, which it is. We'll check the oil and that's a completed service. We finished up the last bit of the service, aired up all the tires, reinflated that spare, greased all the front end, drive shafts, you know, blah, 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 blah. Checked the oil, topped it off, threw a splash of coolant in there because she was just a, an OCD amount low, but no problem. I think we're, uh, we're good to go. I'm gonna back the truck up here 40 feet, we got a vacuum cleaner there. I'll vacuum all of my construction project out of the toolbox. I got the air brake controller just clipped to the visor and uh, we're good to go. So there you have it, an airlift auto level system and a full service done on the truck with the camper in it, which is way better than rolling around the ground in the driveway. So. Thank God for that.